So welcome back to Practical Not Tactical. I'd like to do a video today on uh, offering up some insight, personal insight honestly, uh, just on, on my experiences. But some insight for uh, maybe those that are getting into uh, firearms ownership for the first time in Australia. And uh, what some options you might be considering, uh, rifles, ammunition and scopes that you may be purchasing for your first time. I'm probably going to focus mainly on hunting because that's, that's what I do. And, uh, and, and give you my perspective and, and what works for me. So I hope you enjoy this video and stay with me for this one. Okay, so whilst this video is going to be talking mainly about sporting rifles, and in particular in Australia, most of our options only open to bolt action sporting rifles, let me quickly just cover off on your first rifle if maybe you're a new uh, firearms owner that's never had an opportunity to handle many rifles in your, uh, in your life. So I recommend for any new gun owner wants to get into guns, you're always going to want a 22 long rifle. Now it doesn't matter whether you do buy it as your first rifle or you buy it down the track, you are always going to own a 22 long rifle. The reason for that is it's cheap to shoot, it's fun to shoot, you can use other, you know, you can share the rifle with kids and, and show them how to shoot and teach them how to shoot with it and you'll never ever get bored of shooting a 22 long rifle. Now my recommendation for a 22, if you're not going to be involved in a particular discipline, uh, shooting 22s at your uh, gun club in competition or something like that, is a fun 22. And there's nothing more fun than one of these two. Slide action 22s, old ones, or lever action 22s, both with open sights. Great fun all day shooting beer cans um, and having fun plinking away with 22 ammo. So there you go, there's a couple of options. I mean, these are old ones, I know. Uh, be lucky to get a new one of those anymore. They just seem to not be popular in, by new manufacturers. There's a couple of different types of um, lever actions and even Henry make a new one. You can buy a, a Henry. But that's my recommendation. Fun 22s. Uh, you'll always have them in your collection for the rest of your life. So go ahead, may as well get one for your first firearm. Right, so let's start talking about uh, sporting rifles, particularly for hunting. So the questions if you're a new firearms owner is what, is, what gun should I buy? What rifle should I buy as my first rifle for hunting? So let me help you out by saying that there's probably a couple of different kinds of hunting that you will, you will do. You'll either be hunting in the true sense of the word, where you'll be hunting for either uh, meat harvest or, or skins harvest, um, and in that case, you don't need a lot of firepower. This rifle here has only got a four round internal box magazine. And if you're selective about uh, the animals that you're shooting uh, to harvest, then that's the kind of uh, firearm that'll be more than necessary. Me personally, I'm into more of, a, of feral animal eradication. So I've got a bit of additional firepower in this one with an external box magazine. And uh, this suits me a little better. So if you intend to use your rifle for, say, hunting deer, generally the average deer hunter is going to be a lot more selective about uh, shooting, the, shooting game and uh, won't need that additional firepower. Um, like I said, with pigs, you, you always come across pigs in mobs and if it's all about eradication uh, of the feral species, then the additional follow-up shots you can get with this is, um, gives some greater advantage. Now there's a couple of aspects of um, which, uh, well features of, of a sporting rifle which are going to uh, always be the case with regard to hunting. And one of those is weight of the firearm. If you're going to carry it all day, you're going to want to have it as light as possible. Um, the second one is being short and handy. Again, it's another feature of just being simple to use in the field. Um, having a great long barrel on a sporting rifle means that every time you bend down to crouch under a, a branch or a bush, then that rifle slung over your shoulder is going to catch the branch with the top of the barrel. And just having it as short as possible, as light as possible, is always going to be a big advantage. Okay, so next is the caliber. Now, I'm sure there's a lot of great calibers out there, and all of them suit. But for me, there's a couple which... Uh, which stand out 
and a lot of that has to do with just availability and uh, economy uh, to purchase them. So I, I generally hunt with a 308 Winchester. I mean in Australia it's one of the most common um, rounds uh, and because I'm a reloader I can just about get the brass for free because it's just laying around at my local gun club all the time. I can just pick it up and go and reuse it and I don't have to pay for uh, that, that brass. Um, but of course there's others. I mean 7mm 08, great choice again. Um, but you want to you want to size your uh, caliber for the game that you're shooting. You wouldn't shoot a deer with anything sort of less than a th probably a 308 um, seven millimeter. Your seven millimeter would be fine, uh, but you're definitely not down in your uh, um, five mils and uh, five and a half mils to shoot deer. So that's uh, for me. 308 is a good all-round uh, size cartridge. It's in the short action, uh, allows you to have a short action firearm and uh, it just gets the job done every time. So the next question you're going to ask is what scope do I put on my sporting rifle? And you know, what uh, magnification uh, and what size, etc. So here's a couple of tips. When it comes to scopes, you get what you pay for. Okay, if you if you buy a cheap scope, you are going to be disappointed with it. And what I would consider the minimum uh, quality of scope is I like loophole scopes, and both these uh, scopes here are loophole, and they're the bottom of the range loopholes. They're they're what's called the VX1 range, now being uh, replaced with a, a model called the the Free VX Freedom, uh, but they're the bottom of the range. But yet they're great quality scopes, and when you look through those, the clarity and the ability for those even bottom of the range loopholes to gather light uh, through the scope is just seems to be better than just most of the other stuff you buy. So that's what I recommend. With regard to power, um, rarely is there ever a requirement to get anything larger than say something like that which is a 2 to 7 magnification by 33 objective. Um, if you can't stalk an animal you know anything less than or up you know maximum of 200 meters uh, then there's something wrong with your hunting skills um, that's not a difficult task that one's a three to nine but that's because for some reason that's just kind of the standard where everyone sort of buys that and i've had that uh, scope there for a long time but what i've discovered is two to seven is more than adequate and if i'm walking around uh, in the bush you know looking for the game the power is set to two, it's set to three, it's set on the minimum uh, magnification because more than likely your game is going to appear within a hundred meters or less. So for me two to seven by 33 is more than adequate, more than enough uh, zoom. If I get an opportunity to shoot an animal at more than a hundred meters then I mean the animal hasn't even seen me, doesn't know I'm there and I've got the, all the time in the world to uh, up the magnification on the zoom, take a steady aim and fire off the one shot. Again, because of uh, because I focus on eradication of feral pigs, um, I'm not going to be shooting pigs at anything, you know, less, sorry, more than 100 metres. And I want the follow-up shots on the rest of the mob as well. So I'm in closer and, uh, and two power is more than enough zoom for me. All right, so let's talk a bit, a bit more about calibres. And uh, obviously I'm going to focus on the 308 a lot here because that's the, uh, the calibre that I use for hunting most often. If you're in southern Australia and, and the game species are going to be less than a pig, you're going to be shooting goats, foxes, hares and stuff like that. You definitely don't need a 308 for those. So you'd be probably be down in, a, in a, another common round as your 223 Remington and you'd be down there and of course there's other range of 22 calibre center fires 204s and etc and uh, triple twos which would equally do the same job they'd all be good down in that smaller range and uh, there's a whole range of the of the equivalents of these 308s in those smaller calibers at the same time so let's uh, talk about 308 in particular for me my favorite hunting round is well i hand load but i make an equivalent round to this federal premium vital shock now these are hugely popular in Northern Australia and these are a 130 grain spear hollow point that is the projectile in the end of these and these are just devastating on feral pigs. 
they've got a really large hollow point uh, in the top and Sierra also make a bullet which is almost identical to these which is 135 grain in their range but these ones are spear and this is the same bullet that uh, Federal load in this vital shock ammunition and uh, basically in those I'm, I've got a uh, the 130 grain projectile with uh, 48 grains of AR2208 powder which is the same as Varget powder and that's pushing them out at a bit under 3000 feet a second so they are absolutely devastating the large hollow point means that more often than not these do not even exit a pig they just go in and they explode inside the animal's um, chest cavity uh, provides uh, basically allows all of the energy to be expended inside the animal uh, extremely efficient and humane as well because they don't move when they get we get one of those other options you, you know you can generally the average size for a uh, 308 would be 150 grain or 165 grain and any of those options with soft points or ballistic tips would be a good option also these ones here are uh, 150 grain SSTs in a Hornady. These are hand loads as well. Um, they are a great hunting round also, but for some reason I can't get them to be as accurate as a lot of the other things I have. So uh, I don't prefer them. It's only because of accuracy, not because of the effectiveness of the bullet. Um, here's a sneaky little one on the side here. This is a uh, cast lead load, uh, which, I've, which I use sometimes. These are 170 grain uh, cast lead load for a 308. Uh, these don't travel that fast, but uh, they go in the side of a pig like a five cent piece and come out the other side like a cash register. So they are extremely effective. They punch an enormous hole and are a quick, clean, effective bullet. Um, again, the accuracy is not right up there for anything sort of more than a hundred meters on those. So. Whilst a good experimenting round, good effective, probably not my uh, my, my favourite choice of uh, hunting ammunition there. I just want to go on a little bit further with calibres and cartridges for your choice. Now, my idea is not to exclude all the others. There's plenty of great cartridges out there. But what you need to do is, like I said, is you just need to be realistic about what size cartridge you need for the game in your area. Or what you're going to have access to. Um, as you as you uh, develop with your shooting, you're probably going to own more than one firearm. But this video is about what I should get as my first firearm. Okay, so you're definitely probably going to get a smaller caliber and a larger caliber, and you're going to pick something in those areas eventually. You know what I mean? So um, here's a couple here that I just want to show uh, and talk about some others. So there's others like 243 Winchester, definitely a great round. Um, and one of the one of the most popular in Australia has been for a long time uh, But here's a couple others just to demonstrate this here is 6.5 by 55 Mauser or sometimes called 6.5 by 55 Swedish um, That's a great hunting round deer round as well um, And we'll flatten pigs every day of the week um, That they have a 140 grain projectile, but you can see it's a really long long projectile in them and standard 303 British, this is just a dummy round that I put in here for demonstration. 303 British, again, they're about 174 grain projectile, I think, generally, is one of those. And this is a 7x57 Mauser, uh, another great round, or uh, used extensively in Europe for uh, large game hunting. So, I mean, there's plenty around. You'd call these a bit exotic these days because they're generally just for my military uh, rifles. But again, all great options in areas about that same size. Okay, so down to rifle brands and uh, recommendations. So let me talk to what I know and what I've got experiences with. I'm not going to try to uh, pretend I know a lot about you know every rifle there is out there. Um, exp ones that I've got experience with. You've seen in my videos, Bill hunts with a Tika T3. Now he likes them because they are, well the model he's got is ultralight. They are light rifles. They're a little bit longer than uh, this rifle here in front of me, but they're not a particularly long barrel. Uh, and they are super light, and furthermore, they are super accurate. Great option is a Tika T3. Now, the only thing I don't like about the Tikas is that they only come in one action size. 
That means it doesn't matter whether you're buying one in 3006 or you're buying one in 223. You got the same size action, you got the same size magazines, and everything's adjusted by spaces. Space a block in the action, spaces in the in the magazines. And I don't just don't like the look of a full size, you know, almost magnum size magazine when you've only got a 223 in it. It's a bit of a downfall. But Tikas are made as Seiko's budget range, and they're made to a, a price point for that, and that's what you get. But apart from apart from that small thing, um, they are a fantastic rifle. Right, uh, other one I've got um, some uh, knowledge with is the Ruger uh, Americans. Um, I, I've got a mate that uh, has got a son, 14-year-old son, who hunts with a 308 Ruger American. Very smooth, nice shooting rifle. Very accurate. Lightweight. Uh, plastic polymer stock, so it makes it easy to look after. You don't have to worry about uh, knocking the timber around. And another great option. And, that, and they're right in that great price range of a budget. Just a, just a handy hunting tool. You don't have to worry about knocking it around or being too fussy about... Uh, you know, nice timber work getting damaged. So down to this one. Okay, so this one's a M77 Ruger Gunsight Scout. Now these are uh, one of the models in the, basically the Hawkeye, or the most recent uh, iteration of the M77 is the Hawkeye. And this one uh, has an external box magazine, and it's only got an 18 inch barrel. Okay. It's got a fairly heavy profile barrel quite heavy here tapering off pretty quick which means it can hold heat it's reasonably accurate well it's, you know it is accurate it's got it comes with a couple options with open sights you can change this scope out take this off and put an open aperture sight at the back here and it also comes with a full length picatinny rail on here if you wanted to use it with what they call a long eye relief scope and the scope would be mounted forward to the action down here okay it also has other great features like it has spaces, comes with three of these plastic spaces in the back so you can lengthen it if you're a really large person and you get a longer length of pull on your shoulder there. Um, but uh, the only thing I don't like about this and the Hawkeyes are the same is they're not made to the same standards as the earlier um, M77 Mark IIs and, and Mark I's. These bolts are a little rough, okay? They're a little rough in here. They're nowhere near as smooth as the previous rifle. And I'll demonstrate that here. Here's my Mark II in 308, and these just glide. And then they just lock into place, and they just snap straight down. You can feel the lock up is just better. The machining and the, and the manufacturing is just better in one of these older ones. But then again, they don't come with the extra magazine or the extended magazine. So am I disappointed with that? Well, no, not at all. I can run this bolt perfectly fine. Makes no difference about whether it's the difference between the original one or not. It still functions perfectly fine for me. So the other feature, or well, another feature of the uh, Ruger Scout, it's in the same family as the M77s. It's basically a copy of a famous uh, Mauser action. It has this large extractor claw on the side which provides uh, what they call a controlled round feed. So you should look up uh, the differences and the comparisons between a controlled round feed and, and a push feed uh, and see some of the advantages of these. And another reason I like this one. The other thing is this gun has a laminate stock and to be honest, it's not. it doesn't make it light. It doesn't make it any heavier than timber but it doesn't make it light as well. So, as far as uh, one of those characteristics of a good hunting rifle being light, this is not heavy, but it's not extra light either. Still, all the other features on it, being short, I use it in and out of a vehicle all the time. Um, so being short's really handy. Uh, and it's got a great pistol grip here. It's got great checkering uh, grips on it. But that uh, pistol grip means you can, um, which I can, I can handle it, you know, without having my elbow cocked up in the air is great. Lastly, the sling on it. Um, sling's another item that you'll uh, pay for what you get. Okay, so if you buy a cheap sling, you're going to buy twice. Simple as that. Well, that'll do. And I'm hopefully there, there's something in there for everybody. 
So I'm going to say it again that I'm not an expert on uh, every rifle that there is to be purchased out there. So if you've got a hunting rifle that you feel is a great uh, option, well then put a comment uh, below and tell everyone why you think that uh, that particular brand or calibre of rifle is great that suits your needs. I'm sure everyone else would appreciate that too. Well thanks again for watching Practical Not Tactical and I'll see you back next time.